Praise the Lord. service here on Facebook Live. At this time now, I ask that you would get your hearts ready because we're going to open up with a word of prayer. After that, we're going to have our scripture reading, and then we're going to turn it back into the hands of our praise and worship team. I hope that you're ready, amen, to have a great time in God. So at this time now, we're going to have our principal deacon make his way so that he will lead us in prayer. So let's say amen for our principal deacon, Ron Cuffey. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, we come before you this morning just wanting to say thank you. Thank you, yes, sir. Lord, just because of who you are, Lord, we ask right now that you would stretch out your mighty hands over this service on today. Lord, we ask right now that you would save and deliver and set the captives free. Lord, we ask right now that you would touch each and every individual in the viewing and listening audience. And Lord, we ask right now that you would touch them Lord, whatever it is that they come looking for in the service, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would give it to them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask right now that you would touch a manservant on today. Yes, God. Yes, God. Give them a word, Lord Jesus, from heaven and allow each and every one of us, Lord Jesus, to receive and apply the word to our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask right now that you would touch each and every individual involved in today's service. Lord, anoint them and use them for the uplifting of your kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we ask, Lord Jesus, you will continue to touch and bless and allow each and every individual to know, Lord Jesus, that you are in control of all things. Yes, you are. No matter what is going on in this world, you are in control. And Lord, for that, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. And oh God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. 
And Father, we ask you these blessings in Jesus' name. In Jesus amen. Name. And we thank God and amen. Good morning, church. I'll be reading from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another about yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. May God have listened to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. Amen. 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 We bless God at this time now. We're going into our praise and worship. So let's say amen for our praise and worship team. Amen.
Glory, glory, glory. Glory to the name of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. If you will, bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Father, as I stand before these people on this morning, I thank you, God, for how you've blessed me and you've kept me, God. And you've brought me to this place and point in time to share your gospel, your good news. Father, I want to thank you for allowing me to work alongside with you to be a blessing unto your people. Yes. And I pray for them, God, that as they hear this word on today, God, that their hearts will be changed. Hallelujah. They'll be able to understand. They'll be able to comprehend that it is you that is showing and sharing your love through your word unto them. Yes. And I thank you, God. And I bless you for it all. And I give you the praise, the glory that is due unto you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 At this time now, we are going to have a moment in history. And after that, I'm going to come back with the word. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. All right. So, born on September 16, 1860, William D. Bill Foster was a late 19th slash early 20th century showman who was among the first to prove the commercial viability of making black set films and marketing them to black audiences. He was the first African American to establish a movie production organization called the Foster Photoplay Company, which he started in Chicago in 1910. Although his company only lasted a few years, Foster managed to rack up a number of firsts that paved the way for the 20th century race film industry. Race films were to provide black audiences with realistic alternatives to demeaning Hollywood stereotypes in the period of 1913 through 1950. And that was Amen, amen. A moment in history. Amen. Amen. Now we're getting ready to get into the word of God on today. Amen. And before I get into a word, amen, I just want to share some information, amen, that, amen, I had the privilege, honor of hearing and understanding uh, earlier this week. I was talking to uh, this young man that I've known for quite a few years, and he and I, we work together, and we were talking about the state of our culture and society and what is going on and how this pandemic, amen, and everything else that is going on, amen, has affected people. And, you know, the song that the praise team sang about, I can do all things through Christ, that strengthens me, how appropriate it is for today's lesson. Amen. And if you take a notice that throughout these particular, amen, this month, I've been teaching and talking about, amen, us as believers, us being strengthened and us having the integrity and, and moving forward in the things of God and not allowing ourselves to get distracted. But on today, I want to talk to you about the why you can't give up. The why you cannot give up. The enemy of our faith would love nothing more than us to either recant what we have confessed Amen. In reference to Jesus Christ being the Lord of our lives, and we are living according to his word. Or if he cannot, amen, get us to do that, he amounts pressure via outside obstacles to come upon us and to pressure us and get us to a place just like Judas to end it all. Going back to the conversation I had with the young man that he and I, we have worked together. He shared with me about something that took place in Burke, Virginia, and those of you that live in the area, you're familiar with it. He said a young man walked into a church, and he asked to speak to the pastor, the priest, the leader of the church, and the man told him, if you, you know, go in this room or whatever, and just, just wait for me, and I'll be in there in a few minutes. Before he could get there to talk to the young man, he pulled out a weapon and took his life. He took his life. These are the times that we're living in. And this whole thing about 
people committing suicide, taking their lives. This is nothing new. Amen. And especially, you know, it, it's going on in the body of Christ because people are getting fed up. People are at their wits end. People are, amen, getting to the place where they can't take it anymore. They can't go the next mile. Forget the mile. They can't even go the next foot because of the pressures, cultural, and everything that we're dealing with. If that was not enough, read an article that said about 38% of pastors are leaving the profession or the calling and just calling it quits. Saying it's too much pressure, outside pressure, inner pressure. One man talked about how he's an older gentleman. And in the article, he talked about how, hey amen, when COVID hit, how his congregation of older people were devastated. He said how they had to end service and how when he tried to, it, 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 it was a, it was an insurmountable learning curve for him to get up technically, so to say, to stream and to do all of these other things. And then when he was able to visit some of his members, it was not the same. He let it go. On today, I want to encourage you why you can't give up. <clears throat> why you cannot give up. Let me lay out my goal of the day. My goal of the day is to help the believer get it settled in their hearts and mind that in spite of it all, they can stand. In spite of all the pressures, in spite of what is going on in the culture, in spite of what is going on in our society, where we're seeing things change right before our eyes. Amen. We still cannot give up. We cannot throw in the towel. We cannot let down our faith. We cannot, amen, recant our confession of faith in Jesus Christ. Those things, it is a non option for us as believers. Because there are a lot of things that has been done on God's behalf, or matter of fact, on our behalf, done by God for us. And it is important that you understand and grasp and, and know the things that God has done for you so that you will have, amen, the wherewithal, the knowledge, so that you can stand. I want to now go into my foundational scriptures for today. I want to begin in 2 Peter 2 and 1. 2 Peter 2 and 1. Amen. Beginning at the first verse, the second, and ask that you would remain patient with me. We're going to do a little jumping here. But 2 Peter 2 and 1, and I'm reading from the King James Version. 2 and 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. This is Peter, the second epistle. He's written to the church. He's letting us know about these false prophets. And he also letting us know about these false teachers. He says, uh, teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves, he says, swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious, their crooked, their deceitful ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Folks, if you have not been paying attention to our forms of media, how information is disseminated, you will see and you will come to the conclusion that we are living in a time now where truth is evil spoken of. Truth is evil spoken of. Amen. But let's go on to the, jump to the 20th verse. Look what Peter says. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world 
This is what sin does. Sin pollutes. Sin sullies. Sin makes things nasty. I'm sure those of you that have been around for a while remember back in the day the uh, the Cosby show and one of the daughters, amen, she decided that she was going to get married to an older gentleman and she had not introduced this guy to the family and they did not know him. And all of a sudden they meet him and everything. And then uh, uh, what's his name? Huxable, whatever his name is. I can't remember the first name. Cliff. He, he, he says he, he has to interact with the guy and he tells him what it's like to meet you for the first time and how you're going to marry my daughter. And he gives him the scenario of taking a trash can and putting one of your best steaks on it and serving it. Pollutions of the world. I don't think there's anyone under the sound of my voice who would love eating their favorite cut of steak or any type of other meat off a trash can lid. Why? Because you've deemed it as polluted. This is what sin does. This is what not abiding and living by God's standard, which is in his word, it pollutes. So he's saying here, there are some that have escaped. I have members in here. We've escaped that pollution or the pollutions of the world. How? Because we've adhered to the word of God. But let's look on and see what he has to say. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's how we've done it. He says, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. He's saying if they have escaped the world system and the way the world lives, the way the world operates and all like that, they've escaped all of that by the knowledge that is in this word about Jesus Christ. They've gotten out of it. You know, he's delivered them out of it, but something transpires and they go back in it. He says here, entangle therein and overcome. They've gotten so deep into it. They've allowed themselves to believe lies, multiple of them, and they've allowed themselves to be, to be overcome, that they can't control it. And then it says, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. 21st verse, he says, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. How nasty is that? How nasty is that you watch a dog regurgitate and then he just eats it right back up? I know some of you, probably your stomach is probably turning just even thinking about that. He gives another proverb. Something he paints a picture so that you can see what it is like to give you a visualization. And we can, we've concluded that that dog throwing up and then eating it again, that's extremely nasty. But look what he says here. And the sow, if you didn't know, a sow is a female pig. He says, and the sow that was washed. Oh, Betsy, washed up, cleaned up. Put a bow tie on her tail. He says, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Pig was washed up, cleaned up, and then goes right back into the mud. The word of God washes us up. The word of God cleans us up. And he makes us presentable unto God. But when we, amen, allow ourselves to get distracted and entangled again and overcome, he says, it is not going to be an enjoyable situation for us. Why you can't give up? In 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, it talks about how when we look at the lives of ancient Israel, 
and what they went through. That is written for us so that we can visualize, so that we can see, so that we can understand, amen, how, amen, ancient Israel behaved and what they got into, how God brought them out and how they went back into it and everything. And it paints a picture and it lets us see how loving God is, but also in today's context, I want us to be able to see that why we cannot give up. So with that said, I've got three areas for us to look at. We're going to go now into the Old Testament. We're going to look at the warning. We're going to look at the reason for the warning. And then we're going to look at the results. We're going to look at the warning. We're going to look at the reason. And then we're going to look at the results. So with that said, let's go to 2 Chronicles 15. 2 Chronicles 15. Second Chronicles 15. By this particular time, God had already, amen, brought the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Amen. And Moses has passed. And Joshua has taken over. Amen. Leading them on. And there has been some transition and all. And we come down here to the 15th chapter of Second Chronicles, and we begin to pick up here. It says, and the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes good sense. The Lord be with you as long as you'll be with him. He says, he will be found of you. He says, he will be found of you, but if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Let's go a little bit more. Now for a long season, Israel hath been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they are, <laughs> but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. I mean, that is not so far-fetched, amen, amen, for our, our, our modern culture. I mean, there are people who will seek the Lord and, and God blesses them and open up doors and everything, and they soon forget or they forsake him and they go back to doing whatever they were doing before they were seeking him. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the, the countries. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Seven first, be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obed the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin. Folks, we're seeing a glimpse as to the why. They had gotten involved into idolatry. Idolatry is worship. Or more, when you when an individual spends more time with an object or an inanimate object that has taken the place of God, that's an idol. Because people pray to idols, they sacrifice to idols, they do all of this, they give these idols time that they could be giving God. But let's go on. He says, idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him, excuse me, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought 700 oxen and 700 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord of their fathers with all of their heart, with all of their soul. 
that whosoever would not seek the Lord, God of Israel, shall be put to death, whether small or great, with a man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice, and with shouting, and with trumpets, and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart, and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. So they began to praise and worship him and give God glory with the instrument. They got into a praise and worship service and they made a commitment that, hey, I'm not going to do that anymore, God. I'm on your path. I'm following you. Let's go still in Second Chronicles 25, 14. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods, small g, in plural, of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Did they not just say a few chapters ago that they were going to forsake this idol worship? And they made a promise to God to worship him? 15 verse, wherefore the anger of the Lord, I could understand why. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amoraziah. I hope I said that right. And he sent upon unto him a prophet, which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? Why did you even do that? Why did you even seek them? They couldn't even help them own, their own selves. But now you have taken those idols and now you're bowing down to them. You're giving them what belongs to me. Folks, we cannot allow ourselves to get distracted. We cannot allow ourselves to get into a form of idolatry because it is so important in this day and time that we remain focused on God and the things of God and keeping ourselves free from the pollutions of the world. Now, it's easy to get caught up in it. It's extremely easy. I mean, the music, I mean, the music, I mean, the movies. I mean, it, it, there's a plethora of things that one can get involved in to the point that they're forsaken God. Let's go on a little bit more. Let's look at the results of Israel's disobedience and Israel failing to do what God had said. Go to Isaiah 43 and 14. Isaiah 43 and 14. Isaiah 43 and 14. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the, and, uh, the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Here God gives us a hint of something that he is going to do that is new. Something that is different. 
Because we look back, and matter of fact, I encourage you, go back and read the Old Testament. Work your way through and see how many times ancient Israel got involved in idolatry. See how many times they were warned not to do it, but they did it anyway. And as a result of that, they were, uh, uh, how should I say, captured and taken out of their land that God had given them, that land that flowed with milk and honey. Oh, yes. They were taken out of that land. Then it came back. They were taken out again. They came back because they cried unto God and he was doing this. And the same thing with us in our modern day. But let's go. We, pick, we get a glimpse here. He says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. He says, shall he not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, meaning that I'm going to do something that seems impossible. I'm going to do something that seems impossible because, amen, uh, make a, a, a wilderness. It says make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I mean, it takes some work, really. If you're going to do something like that, you know, make a river in a desert. Well, let's go home. 21st, he says, the beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, talking about animals, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. He says, I'm going to do what I got to do so that my people are nourished, so that they will get the spiritual knowledge that they need and they will be nourished. Let's go here. This people have I formed for myself. Again, another hint. The people have I formed for myself. He says, they shall show forth my praise. These people that he's going to work with, they're going to show forth his praise. He says, but thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, or O Israel. He says, but thou hast been weary of me. Or you've gotten tired. You've gotten tired of me. You, you know, he says, you've gotten tired of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offering. You, you don't bring me any offerings anymore. He says, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifice. You don't sacrifice like you used to. He said, I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. He said, I didn't even bug you about it. He says, thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me uh, with the fat of thy sacrifices, which thou hast made me to serve, uh, me to serve with thy sin. He said, you know, I, I serve you. I worked on your behalf, even though you were in sin. He says, thou hast wearied me with thine iniquity. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. He says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. He says, the, thy first father hath sinned. Talking about Adam. Your first father, he's the one that sinned. And that sin nature has been transferred and brought all the way down through mankind. He says, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse in Israel to reproach us. The reason why they're going through what they're going through because of what they did. But he said, he's going to do a new thing. A new thing, a different thing. Talking about making a meadow river in the desert and a path in the wilderness. We'll talk about that new thing later. But let me finish up here. Amen. Things that you need to know. Why you can't give up. Things that you need to know why you cannot give up. Point number one, you've been bought with a price. You have been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Glory to his name. You know, one of the things that I, my mother taught me at a young age, when someone does something for you and on your behalf that you couldn't do and they did it for you, such as, 
you know, let's say they paid a debt or they, uh, you know, treated you or bought you something, what we know as, you know, they treated me to a dinner or soda or whatever. The least you can do is show a form of gratitude by saying, thank you. That's, 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 that's the least that, that you can do. But Jesus has done more than that. 19th verse of the sixth chapter of 1 Corinthians says, what? Know ye not that your body for believers is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? To allow your body to be God's temple, the price that had to be paid for that, you, we could not do it. But God did by sending and giving of his son. 20th verse, he says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, because of that reason that you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your physical body. The members that you have, everything that you have, glorify God by showing people how God's love extends from you to them. Show them how that in times of crises or when times of stress, time, when our culture and our society, uh, our society is all topsy-turvy, show them that you have a sense of peace based upon this word. Show them that you're not cussing like the sailor down there or the army guy or the Marine, or whomever is cussing. Just show them you're not cussing like everybody else. Why? Because you've got peace about it. Mm -hmm. Show them that, amen, to get peace of mind, you don't have to go, amen, to the local bar, to the local liquor store, or wherever, class six, or a uh, package store, ABC store, whatever they call now, that you do not have to go there and get you some liquid peace. You don't have to do it. Show and prove to them that you are capable of dealing with the situation. Why? Because you have a firm footing. You're firmly rooted and grounded in his word. He says, therefore, you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You belong to him. If you've made a confession, Jesus Christ, you belong to him. Let's look at something else. Still, let's look at something else. Still, you've been bought with a price. Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. He says, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect or complete tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. He says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once, into the holy place, having obtained eternal. Meaning this thing ain't going away. It doesn't wear out. It doesn't, uh, you know, come and go. This redemption, this buyback program of God is eternal. And he did it for us. Who's us? Those who have accepted and made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. This has been done for you. And when you consider what has been done for you, like Paul told the Romans in the 12th chapter, the least thing you can do is just submit, surrender your body as a living sacrifice. But let's go on a little bit more. Point number two. Point number two. This is why you can't give up. Getting wearied to the point of giving up is not an option. Getting wearied or tired to the place of giving up, it is not an option. Folks, I have seen movies, and matter of fact, even myself, I have seen situations where a man, it seemed as though all strength was gone. But an encouraging word, a man was able to make me or that individual to go the next level. Uh, yeah, a lot of you, you know, that, uh, you know, of course, I, I served in the military and, and a part of the training that we had to go through, there's this thing called the obstacle course. And I am a man, how should I say, 
I am not extremely fond of heights. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. I am not fond of heights. But while I was in training, Amen. We had to navigate this obstacle course. Amen. And one of the things that I learned is the value of teamwork. Because what happens is that those of you that have been around me, you know that, uh, amen, I am only so high. Amen. <laughs> I am only so high. I can only reach so high. Amen. But the value of teamwork is, is that there are individuals that can help and assist where you, for lack of a better term, and pardon the pun, come up short. So the thing was to get the uh, a person up that uh, that uh, obstacle course, uh, that uh, that tall structure to the next level, and his job was once he was there is to help everyone else, amen, to come up to where he was. And then once there were two up there, their job, both of them, to help the next guy. So it went on like that. Help push him on up to the next level, and he would help pull on us up to the next level until we have navigated completely through. Amen. This is what Jesus has done for us. Amen. We ourselves could only get to a certain level, but yet and still, we were still coming up short. But he made up the difference in the giving of his life. So now we should be able to navigate easily through every obstacle course that life throws at us. Let, let me get back to it. What was I at? I was at 1 Corinthians. Second point. I, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9. I apologize. Galatians 6 and 9. Let's look at this. Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't get tired to the point of giving up. He says, For in due season. Now people may ask, Well, when is that due season? I'm not the one to determine the due season. God is the one who determines the due season. Yeah. But look what he says here. Uh, he says, In due season, We shall reap if we faint not. If you want to reap, you cannot allow yourself to get to the place and point where you faint Amen. and give up. Because he said, you're going to reap if you faint not. Point number three. There's a reward in this. There is a reward. If we look back in history and how God dealt with Israel, he always mentioned something at the end being better than what it was in the beginning. Amen. Case in point, the deliverance from Egypt. He promised them that in the end, you're going to have a land flowing with milk and honey. You're going to have vineyards that you did not even have to plant. You're going to have wells that you did not even have to dig. You're going to be able to benefit from the work of someone else because God is going to bless you in that area. This is a, there was a reward. There is yet rewards for believers who will endure to the end that they do not give up. So with that said, let's look at something. Let's go to James 1 and 12. Let's see what James has to say. James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12 says, Blessed or empowered to prosper is the man that endureth temptation or situations where he is even tempted, tested, and tried to give up. Not just any other temptation, but that's a temptation as well. But he says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. The crown of life of life. This is the reward for believers, the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that do what? Love him. Crown of life. Still, let's go to 1 John 3 and 1. 
1 John 3 and 1. 1 John 3 and 1. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world and the world system is not going to fully grasp and understand our commitment level to God and why we do what we do and how we live according to the word. He says, because now, he says, excuse me, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Glory. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now, again, if you want to get a glimpse and an understanding as to how Jesus is, go back and look at the Gospels and it talks about him appearing to his disciples after, amen, his death, burial, and his resurrection. How he was able to go through a door, I'm looking forward to that. If there are some doors around during that time. But I'm looking forward to getting into that glorified body because it says we're going to be like him. And then he goes on to say, for uh, he says in third verse, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure because he's keeping that in mind. He's keeping that in the forefront and persevering or pushing through because he wants to be changed to be like his Savior. My last scripture, Revelation 3 and 11. Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Don't allow yourself to be sucked in by a false teacher. Do not allow yourselves a man to be bamboozled and hoodwinked, that you will be cheated out of your crown. If you're standing for the Lord Jesus Christ, continue to stand. Continue to stand. This word is filled with information that has the ability, because it is alive, it, 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 it has the ability to quicken or make alive not only your physical body, but it will motivate you. Amen. It will motivate you. Amen. I've seen guys that are playing football break a finger. They go over to the sideline and they get it patched up. And then they, they, the coaches or whomever tell them, don't focus on that. Focus on the game. Focus on this. And they go out there and they execute. Yeah, you may have a little bandage here. You may have a little hurt here and there. But see, you've got to go beyond that, that momentary pain, that momentary hurt that you may be feeling right now because of what is all going on and what is happening and persevere. Because Jesus even said so himself, that he that endures to the end, this is the one that is going to be saved. Well, you don't have to experience, amen, the uh, perdition. You don't have to experience the thing that God has promised for the enemy of our faith and those who've made the decision to follow him. In the book of Isaiah, it talks about hell hath enlarged herself. A region or a place, there has no reason to enlarge itself unless people are coming in. Towns and, and municipalities, they don't grow, they don't develop unless there is anticipation for an influx of individuals. I want you to remain encouraged. I want you to do the things that are necessary to stay encouraged, to stay focused on God. 
His word is true, and he will do what he's promised that he will do. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, because of who you are and that which you've done and that which you are yet doing in my life and the life of believers. I pray for them, God. I intercede on their behalf, God, that the things that they've heard today and the things that they shall read and, and those who will hear this message later, God, I pray for them, God, that they'll be able to comprehend and understand that you've made and you've given them the wherewithal, what they need to stand, and that is your word. You've given us your word. You've made your Holy Spirit available unto us so that he will lead us and guide us in all truth. And Father, I pray that people that will hear me, God, they will allow this to happen in their lives so that they can stand in the perilous times that we're living today. And God, I bless you. And I give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. At this moment now, we're going to take a momentary break and hear some instructions. We thank you for joining us today. We'd like to take this opportunity for you to participate in our ministry of giving. On your screen, you'll see our giving platforms. Just type in the Living Epistle name and look for our LEC logo. Now, let's do our LEC statement of faith over our tithes and offerings. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us and our household. We have heard your voice and done according to all you have commanded us. Now, Father, look down from your holy habitation in heaven and bless us as you said in your word. Father, we believe that we now receive your blessing according to your word. This is our confession of faith in Jesus name. I believe I receive the windows of heaven blessings. And I thank you father for rebuking the devourer for my sake. I thank you that his hands are tied concerning my money. Now our LEC offering prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to take part in the building of your kingdom by sowing this seed offering. Your word teaches, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. I have purposed in my heart to give freely and cheerfully, for this is what you love. Now I look forward to your grace abounding towards me so that I will have all sufficiency and all things abounding to every good work. Now, let's return to our Living Epistle Facebook Live service. We'd like to thank you for joining us and being a part of our Sunday morning worship experience. Amen, I just have a brief announcement and that is that, amen, for Living Epistle members, as you know, this Friday coming up is our Black History program that we're going to be doing on Zoom. And we yet need people, amen, to profile and talk about various, amen, people that have done great and marvelous things in history. And we're going to be profiling those that evening. So check with Sh Sister Chanel because there are some more slots that are open and available. Matter of fact, I'm going to be making a presentation in reference to, amen, black history. So again, this is not just for young people, but we want to open it up for everyone who's interested amen, in sharing and talking about and profiling someone, amen, this month for Black History. We thank God for you, and we ask that you would join us next Sunday, same place, same time, here at Living Epistle Facebook Live, and also on Wednesday, our Bible training session that we have, 7.30 to 8.30, only one hour. So we look forward to you joining us and being with us during those times, and until then, God bless you. Thank you.